Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Now we're here today to look at two things. One of them probably a little bit quicker than the other one. The first one being the awesome Anaconda Bergen from Craig Goch. The second, which we'll just have a quick snippet of, is my beautiful Moorlands. Being the 624th King, crowned King of the Moorlands, it is always a pleasure to walk my land and just just take time to to just get some fresh air and just be around nature it's, it's an absolutely amazing place if you ever come to the uk please just take five minutes out of london and come up to the kingdom of the moorlands so that you can spend some time here in the moorlands um this area is called the roaches which is again you know it's it's a very strange name not like cockroaches but kind of roaches it, it is spelt the same um, but you know let's move on from that because I could spend all day talking about my land um, but yeah so instead we are here to talk about this so this is the anaconda now I had two pieces of equipment uh, from Craig Gock it was back in November um, the first one was the anaconda no I'm looking at the anaconda now the first one is the constrictor 2 which I'll leave a link to here so that you can see more from that there was also an interview that I did with the team from Craig Gock so you can see exactly how the the mindset of the businesses and their military experience and I'll, I'll leave a link to that as well I think it's also important at this point just to just to stress so um, I, I, I don't have any military experience I, I, I haven't served for my country um, however this is coming from a backpack enthusiasts point of view this is a dedicated military backpack um, which I've I, I've never tested before, and but I, I, I really relish the opportunity to try things that are outside my comfort zone. So I know backpacks, I know rucksacks, but something around this kind of 70 to 90 litre dedicated military style I've, I've never tested before. However, I have thoroughly enjoyed testing this. So I will bring you my... I don't know, what would you call it? Uh, my backpack enthusiast's take on a military backpack, Bergen. Uh, I guess that makes sense. But for now, as you do, we'll, we'll turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look whilst I'm doing that. If you do enjoy this content at any point, please feel free to hit the like, subscribe and share. If you do do that, I definitely want to take this opportunity to say thank you. It means a massive amount to me and my channel. It helps to um, work with the YouTube algorithm as well. But for now, Let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at the Anaconda. As you usually do, we'll go through some uh, some materials, some well, some measurements, some materials, and then we'll have a look at the features. Now, as far as features are concerned, this is a feature-rich pack, which I've come to understand, especially with military packs, that they tend to have that. Um, but from my understanding and certainly how I've compared this to other packs um, it's got a few more features on there that certainly other packs don't have um, mainly to its benefit so okay so to, to actually go into some of the measurements it comes in at 650 millimeters from top to bottom by 280 millimeters across by 280 millimeters deep so it's a reasonably large pack the volume comes in at 70 litres, which is expandable up to 90 litres with the different additional compartments that are around it. Um, I brought this out and how I've been testing this, I've had roughly 20 to 25 kilos in it, mainly because... <clears throat> um, so I've got 20 kilos worth of weight, which I, I just put in as weight. And then there are other things that I put in here, which probably takes it up to around about 25 kilos. The weight of this pack itself is 3.5 kilos, so it's it's probably close to, you know, 25, 30 kilos when, when I've got everything in there. Now, um, as far as the materials through this, this is all made from 1000D PU coated uh, poly polystyrene. <laughs> It's made from, it's definitely not made from polystyrene, it's made from polyester, um, which makes sure that it's nice and rugged and tough. Now, if you go on to the Kribgoch website, so Kribgoch have tested 
the death out of this. There's ISO standards, there's British standard kite mark standards, there are so many different standards that this has been put through and it's also been tested through the Royal College of Physicians as well with the back support. Now I won't go too much into it with this one, have a look at some of the other content, especially the interview that I did with them so you'll be able to see more around um, the, the study that was done with the Royal College of Nurses, but we'll, 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 uh, physicians, we will touch on that uh, a little bit later on. Zips, all of the zips through this are YKK zippers. All of the buckles, now I do have to point out at this point, so, so the, 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 the one that they gave me to test out here, so this is, this is a tester version, but they have shown me the difference in buckles. So the buckles on here at the moment are just kind of standard no name buckles. But uh, Crib Goch went through Wu Jin, they went through Jaw Flex, they, they went through them all and they just didn't feel that the buckles were doing enough, especially the plastic that was in them and the, 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 way, that they, the, the way that they tighten. So they did even more research and they developed their own buckles and plastic hardwares for this. So the ones that are on here do an adequate job but they just weren't adequate enough for Crib Gox. So that, that's just a, a thing to point out. So at the moment, these are all black. All of the plastics on here are black. Um, but the actual plastics that come on a version, if you were to purchase one of these, they would colour match whichever pack that you've got. And you know, these are available in your usual kind of OD, Coyote, black. Um, and this is the um, this is the Multicam. It's not Multicam, it's the British version of it. What's it called? I forget. But less, it's multicam at the end of the day. Now as far as features wise, we'll go through the outside, then we'll have a look at the inside and the different compartments uh, that are on this, uh, on this pack. Starting from the sides, so on the sides here, you'll also notice as well that there are a lot of straps for this. I'm personally, I'm the kind of guy that appreciates lots of ways to be able to tie down things onto your pack. Um, and it's it's a it's an ethos that Craig Gock kind of lived their life by as well. So whichever dimension that you've got on here, whether it's from the side, from the front, and even on the inside, there are compression straps on the inside of this. Part of the research that they did with the Royal College of Physicians was to make sure that the pack there was no torque, there was no movement when it was when it was strapped to you, because that's one of the main differences that changes your gait and how you're walking so they've gone overboard and I would say possibly a little overboard but I, I certainly wouldn't take that away from them. I don't certainly don't think it's to any detriment of the pack the only reason is that there's just a lot of straps there's a lot of management on here now they do do a very good job of that management so all of the straps have a d-ring which is an open back d-ring and that's to make sure that there's less flappage. If you're concerned that you've got lots of these loops, every single strap also then has a piece of elastic so that you can fold that and then you can stow that away as well. And I think that's the bit where I kind of say, well, kind of OTT, because I think in the way that they've gone to make sure that there's enough for, for every single point, they have helped that by making sure that the strap management on this is excellent. You certainly don't need to buy any extra bits or get out your sniper tape or anything to, to fix any of the, the, the billowing straps in the wind. So back to the sides. So on the side you have two large compression straps. Again, each of these compression straps have um, the elastic so that you can stow away the additional if you want to. And if you do pull this out, then your additional length is held on by these D-rings. So there's two of those. Both sides are identical. And then on this side, which again is identical on the other side, you have a large bellow pocket. Now, I've seen a lot of these style bellow pockets on other military packs, and a lot of them are additional ones that you need to purchase separately, where you, you, know, you have the long ones on here. So rather than having to make this as something that you have to buy as a separate component, these are all added in and there is a lot of volume. So this goes all the way from the top here, all the way down to the bottom. So if I push my hand down, that's come all the way down here. So that's all uh, 650 millimeters of depth and it goes in 
roughly about 20 centimeters 200 millimeters and then on the inside as well you have a large pocket here which goes down about nine inches that you can put stuff into as well when this isn't in use got to mention as well it's ambi open so whether you want to have it so that you can access it and just reach back to be able to get something out of here you know you're going to take it out it's such a fiddly thing that you want to be able to get it in here maybe you've got an additional water pouch in here that you can uh, you can feed through and use through the top of the zip you can you can have that in that side pocket when it's not in use with the use of a gusseted piece of material there it sits perfectly flat against the side of the pack then with these um, compression straps you can pull that tight now one of the additional details that they've added to the compression straps are these gussets so rather than it pulling from um, from a single point here this large gusset runs all the way down the length of the side of the back of the pack and also the length of the front of the pack as well so that rather than just pulling on a single point to be able to, um, to, to fasten that down it spreads that load you'll also see that on the front with the compression straps so there's one here, there's one there and there's one here if you need to have anything on the front you can use these compression straps to hold that in there but also again rather than just having a single pressure point where that restriction is fastened against there um, it helps to spread the weight through that whole area last thing that I forgot to mention on the side as well is you have a large pocket here at the bottom so when I came out here today and I had my tripod and my filming equipment I was able to put this on the side and it just fit in there perfectly so the other side is exactly the same and it's it, it's got exactly the same bellows pocket on that side as well on the front you'll be able to see you have uh, a Powell's webbing section here so it's one two three four columns by three rows oh sorry <laughs> three columns by four rows there's a small anaconda um, uh, logo here at the bottom which is color matched so it doesn't kind of um, give you away in the middle of somewhere uh, at the sides of each of these you have some daisy chains there are also d uh, links at the top of each of these as well daisy chains here at the side can also be used to pass through um, your attachment for the top lid Coming further down, there is a pocket here, which I think, yeah, actually, let's talk about it now. So on the inside of here, there is, um, there, there, is a, there is a pull cord system on the inside here. So you can have maybe your wet gear here at the bottom. You can have your dry gear at the top. But this is a large section. Maybe you might want to put your boots into there. Whatever you choose to put in, you can make sure that that is kept separate from whatever's in the top and that just zips open so that you can uh, you can access that at any point now as far as your compression systems concerned so these top two oh sorry this one and this one their main they're they're designed for this main body whereas you also have a dedicated compression strap here at the bottom just for this pocket whatever you choose to uh, whatever you choose to put into there now on the bottom, if I just lift this up, there's some extra, um, there's some extra pals webbing here if you wanted to attach something onto there. There are some grommets, so if you get water into this then the, then the water will freely pass through. Especially if you're using this bottom section to put wet gear into, then you can walk through the day and it will have a, um, a channel at which that some of that water can either pass through or it can help it to dry it out. And then you have, which is again fairly standard with this type of pack, you have two lashing points here at the bottom that you can use to lash bed rolls, camping equipment, anything like that that you want to attach to the bottom of there. Now they're moving up the pack, if I undo this one. We'll have a look at the hood separately in a moment. Just open these out. So there is 
another large zip compartment here at the front which when I open this hopefully if you can see my fingers are just about here so that goes down roughly say 40 centimeters 40 400 millimeters um, and in this large pocket again this can be used for putting large stowaway items that you just need to be able to have quick access to it does stop just where this seam is now that's the, that's the point where this open section here is so that you can get into that that bottom section that you'd use to put maybe put your wet gear in so it kind of makes sense that it stops there but large maps other military style equipment that maybe I'm not up to scratch with I, you can put in there personally I've been putting my knee mat in there um, it fits in great it, it's actually really good for that but um, yeah you know whatever it is that you want to put in there you can you can certainly attach in there I forgot to mention on the outside <laughs> sorry there's so much on here to talk about uh, you've also got your kind of standard loops around the pack so things like ice axes uh, things like um, trekking poles all of these sort of things can be attached here on the front and then you can use all of the other um, pieces of webbing to make sure that they they, they certainly don't come off then going into the top of the pack actually let's let's have a look at the hood first so the hood rather than it being a floating hood this is a hood that is stitched on here at the back I know generally that it falls into two camps when you have these style packs a lot of the ones that I've had in the past although you know I've never done a, a military Bergen like this a lot of those technical climbing style packs have a have a floating hood which helps you to helps you to do that um, it doesn't have it on this but with the amount of room that you do have and the extra length that you've got in these straps if you did need to put something underneath here and to, and, and have this to go over the top of it I certainly don't think you'd have any issues being able to put something like that under there there's also plenty of room on the sides to be able to lash something on or, or stow something away if needs be. Now on, on the front, so here there is a Crib Gok logo and just underneath that there's a small zip pocket. For me, I've been putting my, uh, I've been putting my, what's it's in there, my car keys in there. But there are also two, um, female clips in there which I haven't asked what they're actually for I probably should have checked what they're for so here on the outside you have these two clips but there is also a female clip on the inside of this pocket as well maybe that's a second one just in case you have an issue with this I probably should have checked what that's for but you know it's there should you need it and that zips up there are other openings on here, as you get with a lot of these style packs, if I rest this on my knee. So here at the back underneath this large rain hood, you have a double zip, which opens up into a large top access pocket into this lid. Now in here, there is, again, what you kind of come standard with a lot of these style packs is you get a large rain hood. Um, Crib Gok started, their, their expertise really stems from jungle warfare, so they appreciate just how, how, how things can get wet. So they've made sure, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's PU coated, but just in case you get that additional rain hood in there as well. And then on the inside, if I flip this open again onto my knee, there is another pocket in here, so this will unzip. And then there are some additional organization points that you can put in here. These have elasticated hook and loop bits on them, so you can attach those in. There is a little key stay, and then there's bits that maybe you want to you might want to put some pens into in there as well. On the top, as you'd expect from one of these, there are additional lashing points. So you have a large section here if you wanted to pass a bedroll or again, whatever you want to put through there. And then there is additional PALS webbing here, which is color matched um, with the, uh, the multicam on here to make sure you know it, it all looks in theme. So now to the inside, when we open up the lid, uh, we've got 
a, a very generous sized snow hood on here uh, and there are two compressions for the main section so you have the snow hood to make sure that no debris gets in and then you also have uh, another drawstring which is for the for the mouth of the main compartment to make sure you've got additional support with that mouth there are also two uh, compression uh, straps that you can either have like that or if you crisscross them over they've found that also gives you an extra additional support as far as rotation like that is concerned when you're carrying your packing you want to make sure that there's a there's the least amount of rotation as possible to make sure that it gives you the best support on the inside this is that cavernous 70 litres on the back here actually if I open those up on the back here this these two straps here which we'll have a look at on the outside um, because of the size of this pack it does have a fully uh, supported back panel so these are the two points um, for uh, for the for the uh, suspension system and then you have a large hook here and an internal pocket so that if you wanted to run a bladder system through this you could certainly do that uh, and then there are exit points so there's one here and then it will also then go round the side of there is another hole i can't find the hole where's the hole <laughs> i can't find the hole but it's there there's another hole so that the bladder system will then come out so you've actually got two points, it's here, it's there on the side, sorry. Uh, and that's ambi on each side, so it will go through uh, the snow hood and then it will also go through the lid as well. Um, if you're worried about what size of bladder you can put in this, it's huge, it's absolutely massive. You can fit whatever bladder you want to put in here. Um, I think the largest I've ever seen is like a four litre one, but if you wanted to put a four litre one in here, you could easily do that. There is a contour to the back, and you can feel that in here, there is a contoured panel, um, which does push into it slightly, but um, it's reasonably malleable, so if you've got something against the back, it will, it will certainly conform to that. Then on the inside, as far as organization on the inside is concerned, there's not really much organization because it really is just a large um, barrel opening to put your stuff into. Although, and if I reach in, hopefully you'll be able to see here, we have some additional compression straps. So if there's something that it's at the bottom that, that you're concerned might move around, you can pack that into the bottom. That's gear that you're not necessarily going to have need to access as often. You can then strap that in to make sure that it stays in there and then you can put other gear onto the top as well. It also means if you wanted to put something closer to this back you can also use the suspension, uh, this compression strap to, uh, to hold it closer to your back. Now on the inside, here, if you can see this, this is where that additional gusset is or that additional pocket. If you wanted to, you can completely open this push it out to the sides and then that will give you full access to everything in here from the bottom all the way up to the top. If you did want to compartmentalize this so that you've got your wet gear at the bottom, you didn't want your dry gear or anything on the top to be touching that, you can reach in, grab that lash, pull it tight, zip it up, and then it and then it works as a suspended floor in there to to as i say compartmentalize those two sections now the back panel on this is definitely something that kribgoch have got patents on and they've they've certainly put the most thought into this the main idea be around all of kribgoch's packs is how does it carry how does it work with the human body and this is the, the studies that they've put in with the as I mentioned you know the Royal College of Physicians they went to them and they said how does your back work and it works it just moves with your body in a different way to how other packs do now that's not to say having walked 10 miles with this 
and you know I've got 40 pounds in the back that it doesn't get heavy but from other packs or the smaller packs maybe a, a 30 litre pack that I've tested it takes a lot longer for you to get that fatigue and not just in your back but in your hips and in your knees because you're not having to adjust when you're walking because the back how this carries sways more it takes less or at least there's less effort or less wear on your knees and on your hips afterwards um, so it definitely does a very good job of that now instead of using a system that a lot of packs tend to use where you have the ladders on the back and then you, you have that system where you just move them back up and down Kribgok found that there was some rotation in in this in this section um, which they found certainly didn't help with your posture when you're walking with it so instead they have this four point harness system so you have the uh, the aluminium um, let's call this rail that goes from the top which we looked at here at the top and then there are also two sections here where you can take it out if needs be um, I don't think you should take it out I don't think it would actually work if you did take it out but if you needed to replace this I guess you could do um, and then you have two straps here at the top which you can loosen and then you have a strap and I'm only going to do one because it, it, it took me 20 minutes just to work out where it is but you can see that on this this now freely allows this to move up and down it does go quite a bit further down maybe another inch or so down and then all the way up it's probably again another two inches up um, but for me just where I've got it there oh, I'm going to pull that out then for a second this is just where it is just right for me fasten down those two at the top give them a good tight pull um, this is where as well uh, crib uh, plastics work really well I have found with these they do a good job but I certainly know that with the crib gock ones they, they have an extra system on the inside here which stops any sort of slippage so you've got these three pads there is a great uh, nice padded hip belt which has a lot of support in there one of the suggestions that I made with the constrictor which I'd give the same suggestion with this so when this is on you pull it that way to tighten it up um, I've had packs in the past where you have these and you pull it forward it's a lot easier way to do that if I was to change anything on here I would just change this so that there was there was another buckle here that you could then ratchet that forward um, but again that's you know that's by and by as far as the suspension system is concerned these are really plush padding um, almost feels like closed cell foam it, it, it's that nice you have load adjusters at the top <laughs> it's starting to snow it's starting to snow you have load adjusters at the top so that you can bring it closer to you but one of the additional points that a lot of packs miss is inside here so you have your padding which again is very nice plush padding but down the inside if I pinch this so if you can see where the material is here if I pinch this you can see that that's created an acute angle there and that's because on the inside here there is a um, a plastic liner a hard plastic liner so what that does is it gives it extra support of being able to spread that weight and now we've got a helicopter we generally got a military helicopter flying over that's awesome uh, that helps to spread that weight I'll let that one fly I'll keep this one in might as well keep rolling I don't know what type of helicopter that one is but it's it's very cool and that does a great job of being able to spread this um, evenly or more so across your shoulders. Now, <laughs> would you believe it? So I put all of my stuff away and then forgot to uh, forgot to do this bit. But one of the things I forgot to mention on this back panel is the fact that it can be used as a back board. So there are two grab handles on either side of the backpack, so that if you are a soldier or whoever you are, and you're, you're in a predicament, you need to be lifted up. You can keep this on. Keep suspension system on with the sternum strap and the waist belt and using the two handles on either side of it you can then be lifted up and it will keep your back perfectly straight and all of your vertebra in order mainly through each of those six pressure points so 
there's actually a lot of extra features in this that certainly make it a very interesting pack. Back to the main content. And how does it carry? Well, from what I've come to expect from the Kribgok suspension system and this patented, unique back panel that they have, it, it carries really nicely. As I say now, I do have to preface this with so as far as large Bergens like this, as I mentioned before, this is the first one that I've tested. So the largest pack that I've ever tested probably would be about 38 litres, I think is the largest. This is a 70 to 90, but I've still had the same weight in this that I've had in other packs. So I'm still carrying around kind of that, that 25, 30 kilos, which is what? That's about 40 to 50 pounds. Um, you know, you get tired, but you get tired what I feel less than you would do with some other packs. That pinch or that, that kind of the weight on your shoulder, the way that this manages to be able to spread the weight and also the way in which the back panel uses the muscles. It's, it's very, very, very bizarre. It really is bizarre how you can feel them. I, I, I can feel them at the top of my glutes. I can feel it on my traps and my lats at the back. It's, it's, a, it's a unique system and I definitely recommend if anybody ever gets the opportunity to try one of these packs on. And maybe if I'm out in the UK and you know that I'm in a place, ask me to bring one of these along and I'll bring one along so that you can test it out and you can feel the difference that you get with it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, as far as Pax is concerned, or Bergens are concerned, I think that the Crib Gok Constrict... Uh, <laughs> I'm getting the two mixed up. The Constrictor was the previous one, sorry. The Crib Gok Anaconda is certainly set a high bar for future packs. Now, I do mean that future packs as well. I've, I've generally enjoyed testing this, so... I'm gonna get on to my people at Tasmanian Tiger, maybe 511, maybe Helicon Tech, to see if we can, you know, start maybe doing some comparisons with these larger packs. Uh, so yes, I think it is a very good place for me to say thank you to Kribgok for sending me this. I've certainly enjoyed testing out these two packs um, and I look forward to other pieces of content and other collaborations in the future. So definitely check them out, I'll leave some of their links in the description below. Um, at the moment, so Kribgok really have um, focused on the military side, the military and um, police and law enforcement. Uh, what they're starting to do over the next 12 to 18 months is really to concentrate a little bit more onto the civilian lines bringing their gear into civilian stores. Uh, at the moment, you can only purchase through them, so if you drop them an email, they'll get back to you, they're great guys, they'll get back to you straight away, and they'll be able to give you some prices, and they will ship it directly to you. Um, but hopefully soon, you'll be able to start seeing these appear more in online retail stores in the UK, in Europe, the US, and, and around the world. That's certainly something that they've started now really to focus a lot more into. So. Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to uh, to see these around and test them out a little bit more. So, but yes, a huge thank you to Crib Gok. All of their links are in the description below and some of their social media links. So are my social media links. This has probably been a long piece of content. So if you're still here at this point, I want to say a massive thank you for staying here all this time. I'm sure there's probably going to be some me goofing around as well in the outtakes as well. But for now, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC stay EDC. That is freaking gorgeous. So over there, let's see if we can get this. Let's see if I can get the what's it around. Can we get it? Where are we? Over there-ish is Jodgal Bank, which is a huge space telescope. We come around here, and that lake over there is called Tittersworth Lake. Absolutely beautiful lake. All Moorlanders are christened on the top of the hills over there. Far hill, there's, a, there's a, a, an outcrop called 
um, hen clouds. So all kings of the moorlands, we are all crowned on the top of there. We also, all queens of the moorlands give birth on top of hen cloud. And as soon as we, uh, the, my mother, the, the, the previous queen of the moorlands gave birth, I was rushed then down to Titsworth Reservoir, Titsworth Lake water over there and that's where we are all anointed and bathed for our first wash. There is some amazing history of the moorlands. I just realised the camera's been the wrong way around so you might not have heard anything of that. Hello! Take a closer look at the anaconda. That's where I need the... who is it? Nick, Nicki Minaj, Anaconda, Anaconda, Anaconda. Just off camera. Caught myself doing that last time. Idiot.